Hello, and welcome to BlenderTutor.com. My name is Tom Latvies, and in this tutorial, we're going to create uh, a logo animation with our 3D text revolving around a 3D planet or a sphere. So uh, let's check out the finished result real quick, and then we'll get into it. All right, cool. So this is our the final scene. And if I just scrub through it real quick, you can just see there's really not too much to it. There's camera, text, a sphere, and then some some circles. And then if we check it out through the camera view, got everything going on. And then I also have one more additional sphere on this outer layer that I used to map the stars onto. Let's see what it looks like in texture view. Oh yeah. Cool, so let's get started. Create a new scene. We get rid of our cube. Let me uh, start up my screencast keys and then we'll, uh, I'm gonna, I just like moving these to the second layer. Just get them out of my way. And uh, we'll save this real quick. I'll just call it volleying text tutorial. All right. So first things first, let's go to the top view. Press seven on your numpad to get into your top view. And let's just add our text. Now without scaling anything, uh, let's just edit it first. If you go hit tab and go into edit mode, you can type whatever you want. So I'll just do Blender Tutor. Ooh, what did I do? So once again, Blender Tutor. All right, and then I'm just going to change my font really quickly to something that looks better. Use my font. And uh, for extrude, let's do like a 0 0.05 just to give it a little bit of depth. That should be good. And cool. So next, uh, and really quick, I might just change this. I might call it like a logo or something. And now I will add our sphere. And we'll just scale that up a little bit. If you hit Control Two, it'll add. It'll automatically add a subdivision surface modifier at the second level. Um, so it's a quick little handy tip. I'll just call this globe or something. And I'll hit Control A. It doesn't really matter for uh, rotation scale. All right. Now I'm going to add a curve circle and I'm going to scale it up. This is basically going to be what we use to control the text. I'm going to bring this out a little bit farther than the globe and we'll call it um, the logo controller. Bontroller. That's not a word. All right. Once again, hit control A and then rotation scale. It kind of resets everything in the world for that object. So this is now its origin. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our text object. We are going to go to the modifier panel and add a curve modifier and select the logo controller as our curve modifier. And as you can see, it looks crazy. This is not what we want. So we're gonna do several things. First, if you just go into front view and you just rotate, hit R and then X, rotate it up by 90 degrees. And that's almost looking good, but now you can see it is backwards. So the one other thing we're gonna do is just rotate it along the Z 
by 180 degrees. And now, uh, there we go. It is what we want, except it's now uh, horribly stretched. So you could just solve that by just scaling down on the Z. And uh, if that's looking a little too thick for you, you could always uh, change the extrude amount to like a 0.035 or something, just get a little skinnier. And that's pretty much what we want now uh, in terms of the look of the curve of the text, but now we need to be able to actually control it. Now, if I were to just move this around, it would go nuts. So what we want to do is actually uh, select the text and then hold down shift and right click on the curve circle as well and this is going to be basically our controller so if you just hit control P object now uh, if I move this around it sticks to it so if I rotate it along the Z it's gonna rotate around our planet which is what we want Yay. All right. So then we have to do a couple more things. I'm just going to set that up around there. Now if I hit, uh, I'm basically putting, putting my view around where I'd want the camera to be looking. And now if I hit Control Alt Zero on my numpad, it's going to set down my camera. Now I can't actually control my camera right now because it's on the second layer. So if I just uh, have both layers on at the same time, if you hold down shift, you could select multiple layers. Now I could uh, control my camera and I can move it around while I'm using it. I'm gonna move it back a little and I might actually do something like that. We'll do like, 50 millimeter lens. Just move it back a little. And as for our light, I'm going to use nodes, change it to a sun. Rotate it like that. get it pointed at our text that should be fine um, I have a feeling this is gonna be crazy blown out let's see yeah a 100 is far too big for a Sun that's fine for a point lamp but for the Sun that is too big so let's uh, change that to like a three maybe even a two and that'll be good for now. One second. All right, sorry about that. So now that we have basically all the basic elements in our scene, uh, let's start animating the text really quick. So let's uh, first I like to, you know, basically get it completely out of view of the camera behind the globe. And if you hit I, you could add a um, keyframe. So let's just, I just need a rotation keyframe for this. Oops. And actually, if you look down in the timeline, you're going to want to start on frame zero, which I did not. So I'm actually going to also open the dope sheet because that lets us edit our individual keyframes and move them around so I'm just gonna take that keyframe and uh, move it to frame zero okay and then uh, let's go like 20 frames forward and rotate that into view just like right around there and add another keyframe 
Let's see how that looks. Nope, too slow. So the nice thing about having the dope sheet open down here is that we could uh, really easily move these keyframes around and speed up the process. I want to really zoom in. So it might only, maybe I only want it to happen in like eight frames. So let's try that. Even that might be too slow. That's, that's probably looking okay. We're going to do that kind of like slow-mo effect where it like moves in fast, then slows down, then speeds up as it's leaving. So we got its little speed in. And I might actually want these not to start like right away. So let's let's move these down like 12 frames or something. So it's got a little, you know, standstill. Then it zooms in. And then uh, let's say we want to be readable for like three to five seconds so that the audience can see the actual logo. Um, we're doing a 24 frame per second uh, sequence. So if we just do four um, seconds, it should be 96 frames, I believe. So we're at 20 right now. Let's go forward to uh, about 120, like 116. And I'm going to rotate this until it's barely readable anymore. Add another keyframe. And then so another 8 forward. So um, 124. And we'll rotate that until we can no longer see the text anymore and add that. So now let's just view our uh, little animation real quick. Oh yeah, it almost stops. So that's looking wonderfully horrible right now. Um, once we're done animating all of this, we're actually going to open the graph editor and start editing the, uh, the curves. So um, Next, what we're going to want to do is animate the camera a little so it's not so static. So I'm going to add another curve circle and scale it up a little bigger. And we'll call this one camera control. OK. So now we could actually parent the camera to this one. Control P to object. And now if we go into camera mode, if we start rotating this around, you could get some really cool uh, camera movements really easily while rotating around this sphere. So uh, let's start once again on like frame one. And we'll if I hit RR, just double tap R, you could uh, free rotate around the scene. So I'm going to rotate down a little. This is what I did in my original one. And I'll just hit I rotation. And uh, rotate it to around there. Another one. Now I'm going to jump forward to near the end. And I really don't want the camera to move too much during this initial, like, slow mo period rotation. And then again at the end of the sequence. And I'll let it go past that to like 140. And we'll just. Uh, go until just before we can start seeing that uh, text again in the top left of the globe and see how wacky this looks so let's watch that so in slow motion 
and then it all speeds up again. Um, all right, so that's our basic movement. I'm gonna change the length of our uh, timeline to 140. All right, and uh, the last thing I did in mine was I uh, keyed, I keyframed the basically focal length of the lens so that it zoomed in slightly. So uh, if you just go over like one of these sliders over here, so if I go over the focal length and I type I on the first frame, it adds a keyframe there. So now if I jump to the end of the sequence, I zoom that in to like, let's just even just do 60 and type I again. Now that's keyframed as well. So you can see throughout the uh, piece, it's actually zooming in as well as moving. All right. So now that we've got our kind of rough animation, we can, I like to just use the default animation uh, editor up here and uh, just move that over a little get that viewing over there and just edit one thing at a time so I'm gonna zoom into all of these and then here are my curves down here alright so before we get into the animation part of this tutorial I just want to go over two things real quick I'm actually recording this after I recorded the rest of the tutorial and I just want to make sure you know how to do a few things before we get into it so first off once we're in the curve editor you can see I could select these keyframes and you can see they have these long handles that we could adjust and move around um, to adjust these or to change the handle type of these keyframes, all you need to know is you type V on your keyboard and it'll let you, it'll bring up the selection menu. And just so you guys know, we're going to be working mostly with vector handles for this um, tutorial. But just so you know, press V, brings up that, and you could change the handle type. The other thing you're going to want to know is how to resize the um, the curve editor. So a lot of the time when you open it, it's going to be like zoomed in and you can't really see everything. You have to zoom all the way out. If you want to be able to see everything very easily and adjust it perfectly for your view, if you hold on Control on Windows and Command on Apple, and then the middle mouse button, it lets you just resize this any which way you want. And um, then if you just hold down the middle mouse button, you could pan around this view and just move it in any direction. Um, and that's about it. So let's get into the animating portion. So really the camera, all we've got is the focal length, which will be that red one. All I'm gonna do is select these and uh, do V. I want them to be vector. I just want them to be uh, just one straight zoom. I don't want to like slow down the zoom at some points and speed up the zoom at other points. I just want it to be constant throughout the entire piece. Okay, I just did that just to get it out of the way. But uh, let's uh, let's worry about the text controller first. So or the logo controller. So all we have is action. But really, I mean, we're really. For that one, it's only doing anything along the Z. Um, y and X aren't really doing anything because, like, if I mute these and turn them off, it's still going to look exactly the same because it's only rotating along the Z. But when you add a rotation keyframe, it adds a key for every single uh, axis. So let's just delete those. If you select them both and hit X, it just gets rid of them. And uh, now we can see what we have. So I'm going to select all these by just hitting A twice. I'm going to change these to, I believe, vectors. No, don't want vector. Automatic, maybe. Yep, 
That's what I want. Automatic. Okay. So you can see even in this initial speed up right here, we've got a little curve on that. I might just move that down a little so it's pretty straight. And then this one can let it like taper off a little. So it's like slowing down all of a sudden. And actually, you know what? It, it wouldn't be so bad to do that a little over here as well. So it just speeds up and then slows down really quick. And uh, as you can see over here, there's like a flat line for quite a while where it's not really doing anything. So let's, uh, let's move that up. So it's not so static the whole time. I might have to change the location of my camera a little, but let's, uh, let's watch that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of overshooting our mark kind of want to like slow down by that point. So let's maybe move that down a little, maybe around there. And that's not really fast enough. So we almost want that to come in even sooner three frames and I don't want this curve to overshoot too much so let's see how that looks okay oh it's almost too quick now let's move it over a couple frames Something like that. As you can tell, this is a lot of kind of tweaking and experimentation to get it looking just right. Okay, so that's that's looking better. And that's our little animate our rotation throughout. It's at least moving throughout, but near the end it actually gets a little too far. So let's move that down just a bit. I still want to be able to read it near the end. So let's see, how's that look? Ooh. Ooh. A little too slow. Let's maybe have it rotate. I guess over there is okay. We, we need some motion. The other thing we could do is uh, shorten the length of the rotation. So it's not like four seconds. That might be a little too long. We might want to change it to three. And it's actually, lucky for us, a very easy thing to do. We go up here and we can just select all of our keyframes for the latter half of everything, camera and everything. Um, let's take off a second. So go from uh, 116 to, let's go to 92. Oops. Reselect those really quick. If you hit G, that'll let you move them all at the same time. There we go. So now let's watch that again. All right, so we might even be able to move this A little farther now and I might move this a little farther as well up yeah it's almost you can hardly tell it's slowing down so let's uh, slow that down a little
we go. I just want to want to whoosh in, so that's looking better. And now we've got our nice rotation, and then near the end, that might be a little too far again. So we could take that if we pull that down. I still want to be able to read it for the most part. So. Even that is uh, pretty slow. So, and I think it's gonna help once we adjust our camera as well. Everything is just a little too static for me right now. So that wishes in really slow rotate. I might, yeah. I think I'm gonna even shorten it by like another half of it a second. Let's let's go down to eighty. All right, so we're getting there now. And we're gonna want our text to zoom away again, so. Okay, so I think I might actually, now that I'm looking at it, I was playing with this a little, I think I'm going to change these to um, vector keyframes because they give us that harsher point. And now I could adjust this so it kind of eases into it so that it, it kind of slows down right at the end and then it's now it's in this constant um, motion. All right, and then for this one, just move that down a little, and then we could uh, ease almost ease that out a little bit. And then as it's exiting, I pretty much want that to exit at the same speed, so we can. Drag that out a little more. Maybe a little too much. There. That gets out of there real quick. All right. So we, let's watch it. Zooms in, we've got a nice Steady motion, zooms out. All right, so we're pretty much done. Where does the camera stop moving? Like a 104. So let's just end that at 104. Watch it. All right. So now let's last thing, let's uh, edit the motion path of the camera. Which is probably gonna be pretty wacky. So we will actually have to keep all of these because it does rotate pretty much along every axis. All right, so let's do uh, one at a time. So we'll turn off Y and Z. We'll just focus on X and see what it's doing for us. So if you mute these right over here, that way when you're watching the animation, it only moves along the, the ones that are on. So for us, it'll be X only. So let's check it out. And I kind of wanted to have the same speed ramp effect that we have for the 
text. So um, let's, let's just change these to vectors and just watch it real quick. And I think I think uh, the camera might need to be affected. The camera like ends a little later than the text slowing down. I want them to pretty much slow down at the same moment. So pretty much right there. So let's see. We're like one frame off or something. So let's just move that over a frame and see how it looks. And then let's make sure that speeds up again. The right frame, it looks like it does. Yeah, all right. So I'm actually okay with that. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Let's check out what Y is doing for us. Really, Y is doing the least in this one. So like we I think we could just get rid of this right here because there's so little movement anyway at that beginning if you just delete that and then uh, we could change these two to vector and the reason I'm doing that is just to simplify as you can see like as we scrub through this it's barely moving it's only really till we get to the speed up again at the end that it starts doing any major movement so you, you could barely notice this so I just changed those to the vector so it's a constant rate of movement the entire time which is barely anything, and then it just speeds up right there at the end. And uh, let's see, how do I want this to end out? Um, let's just play with that a little. It's basically right now, as it curves down, that means it's slowing down its rotation at the end, which might be a good way to end it. So, okay, let's uh, we'll keep that for now. I think that's about all we really need to do. As you can see, it's barely anything. So let's go on to the Z, which is probably going to be the majority of our work again. And see what we've got. Uh, by the way, the way I'm adjusting this is if you hold down Control and then the middle mouse button, it lets you uh, kind of adjust the size of this. Sorry for taking so long to say that. All right, so let's uh, let's watch what the Z is doing for us. Cool. So once again, let's I'm gonna change all of these to um, vector. If you hold down, I'm sorry, I I am forgetting to tell things. If you hold down, if you with the keyframes selected on the curve, uh, the the curve editor. If you hit V, that lets you change the keyframe handle type. Um, so I'm going to change it to vector, which basically let, lets us adjust every single piece separately. So right now, let's just check out what it's doing for us. So I think I might move this one one frame over, one frame earlier. Let's watch that. And I know as you can see this, as the camera's moving, we could actually see the text come into frame before it starts moving. But I think that might just be because um, might be be because I moved that one frame earlier, but it might be because like it's hidden because of the other rotations that we we aren't applying right now. So we'll we'll check it out once everything's adjusted. So um, rotates in, 
rotates out, and we kind of speed there up there at the end. I might also uh, adjust that so it kind of slows down at the end again. And then that's also going to kind of be like our fade out at the end of the rotation, so it kind of slows down. And this, uh, let's move that one frame sooner as well. Okay, so I think uh, I'm happy with that. Let's let's turn everything on and unmute it and and watch it real quick. All right. Um. I'm going to actually go back into the default view so I get a better look at that. And I'm also going to just, it's kind of slowing down right now as we watch it. So I'm going to um, set this to one so maybe it'll speed up a little. There we go. I think we're getting a better frame right now. Oh, I just jinxed it. It was. Just watch it on loop a few times. It's weird, it kind of like slows down right at the end. It's hard to tell because my frame rate, as you can see up here, keeps on dropping in and out. It kind of looks like it's slowing down there right at the end. Which I do not want. But okay, so let's uh, no, okay, that's good. So let's call that done. Just you know, obviously, you could keep on tweaking it to your liking. Animating anything is an iter iterative process, so it's gonna take. A while for you to get it looking exactly the way you like. Mine probably took a couple hours of tweaking before I decided I was happy with it. Um, but I will not make you watch that. So, all right, let's uh, let's get into kind of organizing the scene to actually render it out. I'm not gonna go into texturing everything. Like the globe that I created for mine was actually. Um, from Blender Guru, uh, Andrew Price's creating a realistic looking earth tutorial. And I just uh, grabbed his textures from his tutorial and I applied them to cycles, which was very simple. Um, but that's that's where I grabbed them. I'll, I'll include a link to his tutorial in the in the comments so you could check that, te check that out. But for now, I'm just going to like... I might just leave this as, you know, maybe I'll give it a solid color just so it's not so boring. Make it like a blue globe. And then for my text, it should be orange. So let's see how that looks. So let's uh, really quickly Add an orange material. Okay. So we'll do that. And then the last thing we're going to do is uh, I'll add one more sphere. And just zoom that way up until we're inside of it. And that will also get. Um, Subdivision surface, smooth, and that one we will, um, I might texture this one real quick. So we'll just call it uh, outer sphere. 
I'm gonna save real quick. Okay. So for this outer sphere, let's zoom out so we can see it. Go into edit mode. I'm gonna from the top view. I'm just gonna delete the. Uh, center vertices because we're not going to see them anyway and it, it kind of makes it a hassle to texture it so um, basically now if I select just the top and bottoms uh, open ends and I hit control E I could do a mark seam and now uh, from a point where I'm not going to be seeing anything like behind the camera. The camera is right there. So behind the camera I'm going to add another seam like right there. And I'm going to very quickly texture this by uh, go to front view and I'm going to do apply rotation and scale on it by hitting control A rotation scale. Um, we'll go to the UV image editor over here and I'm going to make a new image. I'll call it outer globe. And I want it to be, um, let's do a UV grid. And that resolution will be fine for this. It's just so we could render, or, you know, texture it with something. And I will save this as a texture and I'll call it outer globe.png. That's perfect. Now go into edit mode, select all, unwrap, and go to sphere projection. And uh, that pretty much perfectly unwraps our sphere. It might be a little uh, stretched vertically. So for color, I'll select. Where is it? Image texture. And then I'll just go out here and grab my outer globe. So now let's go into textured view. So yeah, as you, it's a little stretched. So what I'm going to do is scale this down on the Y. That's about what I want. It'll be good for what we want. So now you can see we're nice and uh, we'll, we'll have the movement of the outer globe as well, just so we can get a background. Okay, so let's join that over there. And uh, what we're gonna have to do is separate these all into separate render layers. So let's get into that real quick. Okay. So let's, uh, we'll do the globe on the first layer. So if you go to this uh, tab over here, this is the uh, render layer tab. As you can see, we only have one right now. So we'll call this globe. And I only want it to be the first layer. And right now everything's on the first layer, but we're gonna change that in a second. And uh, that's about, everything we need to do um, so we'll add one we'll call this text and we want it to be the second layer so what we're gonna have to do is grab our text right there and move to the second layer And it's still showing up because I have both layers on, but if I were to now just only select one, you'd only see the globe. So we'll turn that back on. Okay. And then we're going to add one more, and we're going to call it like outer sphere. And one more thing for the text layer, we're going to want to also um, apply a mask layer and we want the first layer to be our mask layer because it's basically as it's coming out right here I want the globe to be cutting it off when it's in front of it and then as it warps around it'll uh it won't cut it anymore but then as it disappears again behind it it'll be kind of cutting it out and you'll see what I mean once we uh get into compositing 
cool. And then for outer outer sphere, we'll do three, and we pretty much want that to be its own thing. So by the way, if I zoom out, I'll move that to the third layer. Just hit M and then three on your keyboard, and I'll move it to that layer. Now if I turn that on, it'll be right there. We're not gonna want that on really. Oh, you know what? I'd actually do one more. Let's call a lamp layer. And that'll be the fourth layer. And I want to exclude. OK, so we don't have to do anything like that. But I will move the sun to the fourth layer. And then in the, we're not going to render that. So you could turn that off. That's kind of just to work with. So now if I go to the outer sphere, I could exclude the fourth layer. I don't want the lamp layer to be affecting it. And what we're going to want to actually do is in the material for the outer sphere, instead of a diffuse texture, we kind of almost want to make an emission. And right now, that's going to look strange. Might change it down to like a 0.5. I just want the color to show up without any light affecting it because there we go. So now this is just the outer sphere without any lights on it. As for the um, world settings, you can change that to like a dark color just so it doesn't interfere too much with our lighting because um, I really just want this color to show up without any shading because if, if this were like the stars that I used I don't want a, like a sun lamp to be affecting the stars because in real you know in space that wouldn't be happening so I just want it to be its own thing all right so Let's check out what these three layers, oh, turn that off, turn the lamp layer on. Let's see what these look like right now. Okay, so that's about what we're going for. Obviously, you're probably going to texture this sphere and you're going to maybe texture your logo or use something else, but uh, this is the basic gist of what we are going for. So, turn that off. And I actually, one more thing, I might just move that down a little so it's a little more centered around the sphere. And when I did that, I, I moved only the text, not the actual controller. So it shouldn't affect the animation whatsoever. Okay. Cool. So say that one over time. We're kind of getting ready for our rendering process. So let's go into compositing and use nodes and backdrop. And we're going to need the three render layers that we just created. So I'm going to, I already have my globe layer. I'm going to want my text layer, so I could just duplicate this twice. And we'll change it to text, and we'll change it to outer sphere. All right. So, really, we're going to want all of these layers turned on when we're rendering, but we're not going to actually have them going anywhere yet. What we're going to do is there's an output node called file output and that's what we're going to be using at first and we could duplicate that three times because we're going to basically do file uh, or image sequences for each render layer and um, we're going to save them each to their own folder so Let's uh let's choose a spot to save these two. 
As you can see, I've already done this before. So, okay, I have my Blender renders. I'll create a new folder and call it Logo Animation Tutorial. And now I'm going to make a, a file name and that's going to create its own folder. So this first one was the globe, so I'll just call it globe and accept. And now that has a folder that it's saving to. Do the same thing over here. Go to logo animation tutorial. I'm going to call this text. Accept. Grab this one and just call this outer sphere and accept and now uh, we could just render that out real quick so uh, I'll do this at 1280 by 720 and I want to RGBA because I, I want the alpha channel for the uh, text and for the globe and you're gonna to have to change a few other things. For sampling, for renders, let's just do 100, since this is kind of like a test light path, we could change everything down to low, four and zero. We don't have any caustics. Uh, I do want transparency. And then For performance, I have, I'm using the GPU, so I'm going to adjust these real quick. Once again, if you're using um, a CPU for rendering, I would do 16 by 16. Okay, so we are set, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this and render it out, and then uh, we'll come back and do some compositing. Um, one more thing before we start rendering, which I just realized, is we are going to want to, in our render layers tab, um, for the text in the globe, we don't, we want to exclude the outer sphere layer because we don't want it to be blocking out our light. So, just. Uh, Exclude the layer that you put it on. For me, I put it on layer three. So for the text in the globe, just exclude it and it won't affect our light from our sun lamp anymore. And then make sure you have all of your layers on when you hit render. And now we should be good to go. So I'm going to hit render now. And uh, now you can see we're getting our sun. And I will be back when it's done okay one last time before we render in our globe and text render layers we're going to want to turn off use environment we do not want to render the sky in these layers so i'm going to render this out now we have it saving to the folders we want them to um i'll set this rendering and then we'll come back and we'll start compositing Okay, and we're back. So now that we're done rendering, we can get rid of these bad boys. Just go ahead and delete those. And we're gonna bring in some movie clips. So go to open. We'll go find our folder we saved everything to. I'll grab them from the bottom up. So it'll be the outer sphere first. And then you can just duplicate that and we'll go grab the globe next okay perfect so let's get a color mix node and layer the outer sphere first and then grab the globe and if you turn on the alpha right there go to viewer that is what we're looking for and then we'll uh, 
duplicate this mix node, take the output from that one, put it in the top, grab the text, put it in the bottom, and then connect these again. And uh, we have all of our layers now. So now if we jump around through the timeline, it should update. And if you look back when I was talking about uh, masking out the text as we move through this. Let's see, let me zoom in a little. You can see that the text is now behind the globe. And as we move forward, it moves in front of it. If we hadn't used the mask before, it would have, even when it was supposed to be behind the globe, it would have shown up in front of it. So that's why you had to do that. And I mean, you know, this, this was more of just to show you how to export your, your render layers as separate files and then combine them together. I'm not going to go in depth really in, um, how to you know composite anything right now um, basically what you're gonna want to do is before you render everything you're gonna want to texture it to your liking and then you layer it like this and you could add any effects that you like um, on your own per layer and uh, I'll do I'll do more compositing and tutorials another time, but for now I just wanted to show you how to do the animation of this globe and I wanted to do the basic rendering and compositing, but I won't do anything too in depth right now. So one more time we'll just watch that. And that is gonna be the tutorial. So thanks for watching and uh, subscribe and check out the website for more tutorials soon. Um, my next tutorial is gonna be another animation based one. So see you then, thanks for watching, bye.